You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. So it begins again. Hello and welcome to the Creep Geeks Podcast. I'm Greg. I'm Omi. And we're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff today. So this particular podcast uh, episode is brought to you by the Creep Geeks Podcast and our patrons. What? Okay. It's just a commercial. Why are you looking at me like I have two heads? Huh? Is All that, liquored up on Subway Sub. That would be great for a, a With whole the Chipotle podcast. sauce. What? Whole podcast episode. Why does Greg have two heads? That's right. Anyway, um, so this particular podcast that we have is called a Creep Geeks Podcast or Creep Geeks Podcast. You can take the the away. It's all right. We respond to both. This is season seven, episode 298. Miami Aliens, Jellyfish UFO, Smurf Lore, Mystery Meat, ooh, Meat Mystery, sorry. Yes. And Prove Paranormal, Win Money. There you go. It's a cornucopia of things, not unlike the... Uh, the um, the cornucopia problem that people were having. <laughs> what? But the Mandela effect. There's a big thing about did the fruit of the loom actually have the cornucopia thing? Oh, gosh. And when I grew up, it had the cornucopia thing because that's how I knew it was fruit of the loom because I didn't know what that thing was. I just knew that it had all sorts of delicious fruits coming out of it. And for a minute there, I'm like, that's, that's how fruits are made. It was yeah. a wonderful time in the 70s. I grew up seeing spaghetti being grown on trees and commercials. I had no idea pasta was made out of flour. I didn't, you know, when you're a little kid, you're stupid, right? You're just dumb. You don't know things. Okay. I thought spaghetti grew on, grew on trees, like in Italy. You had a, you know, uh, a hefty Italian family out there picking spaghetti off trees, and they'd lay it out to dry. It made sense to me. No. Well, yeah, obviously. Okay. You know, and for a minute there, I also thought that, like, my grandparents and stuff been seen in black and white. <laughs> because color, you know, TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that's how you knew stuff was really old. If it was in black and white, I figured just, I don't know. It was weird. Okay. So anyway, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. And if you'd like to support the podcast, there's a couple different things you can do. You can interact with the podcast by using our toll-free phone number. And that phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. Yes. Uh, we also have websites and things like that you can check out. and check out our Facebook group. And we are available on anywhere you can listen to a podcast. So if you're listening to a podcast right now and it's our podcast, congratulations. <laughs> Okay. If you want to listen to it somewhere else, you can. If you want to listen to it on YouTube and just let it play while you go vacuum the leaves or whatever, then you can do that too. <laughs> vacuum the leaves. Yeah. There are machines out there, like riding lawnmowers, that when you ride over them, it just sucks the leaves up and throws it in the back. It doesn't. You don't have to get out there and rake them like a peasant. I don't know. For some reason, I thought you meant inside the house vacuuming leaves. Well, so that would be the problem. Okay. There are different ways to do different things. Uh-huh. Different opinions on things. All right. Which is why we're going to talk about some things that we find to be interesting, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the deal. Uh, we talk about a lot of stuff that you can't see because this is primarily an audio-based podcast. And maybe one day we'll do live streaming and stuff and then, you know, see how that works. But Maybe get seven more listeners. Yeah. We'll get through all the effort and stuff and then hope we, you know, it, it's it's a thing. So with it, who cares, right? Mm-hmm. So here's some things you can search for. And we include links of everything we talk about in our show in our show notes. Right. Yeah. Now, if you want to go back after we're done and you want to look at some things, uh, you can do that. And I figured it'd be nice to say, hey, these are some things that you can search for on your own. And the first one we come across is Miami Aliens. Yeah. And this has been pretty popular over the past week or so. And the idea is, is that the police in Miami are responding to this something event that happened at a mall. And what made it so unusual was not just that something was happening at a mall and some cops showed up. It was like a lot. Of cops showed up. There was a very heavy police presence that showed up at this mall. And the initial story was, yeah, is that it was kids, some sort of ruckus going on with some children out there, right? Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. yeah. And so all these cops showed up and they're like, well, why would you just show up for kids running around? And then they're like, no, no, it wasn't just kids. It was 50 kids. And then there was fireworks and we thought it was gunfire. And they're, they're, the story is progressing, right? And yeah. But originally the story was, why are all these cops showing up? What's going on in Miami, Florida? Yeah. Because if it's just kids, they don't need to send like every cop they got. Wasn't there a school fight like a few weeks ago where it was 50 kids and it was only like two cops? Yeah, something crazy like that. So the amount of police response versus the, you know, 
activity that was put out to us. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so if people started taking a look at it and seeing what's going on, and now there's footage of, you know, it looks like helicopter footage where something is walking, and there are people like, that's a nine-foot-tall alien. Yeah. Look at it, and it, the footage does look weird, and of course we can't show you the footage because this is an audio, primarily an audio-based podcast, so we include a link to it. But when you look at it, it's all about scale, right? Yeah. Everything's about scale. Some of your largest problems you have in the world is basically based off scale. Too many people involved it creates a bigger problem. But it looks like these people, because you know they're saying, oh, that's not, those are just people walking. That's three people. Now yeah. it's one people. I mean, Look at it. It looks like 10 foot tall. Oh. And people are like, well, you can't really see it. It's kind of see-through. It's kind of weird. And well, yeah, that's that's what an alien looks like. Yeah. And there's different footage of something walking across the street, something walking in what looks like it's in front of the mall. There's cops everywhere, and cops aren't engaging. And people are saying, well, the reason why the cops aren't engaging is because it's an alien and they're freaked out. And other people are saying, well, the reason why they're not engaging is because it's just like regular, it's just people walking. You know, and when you're down there in it, it's completely different than if you're uh, taking a helicopter view, quite literally, yeah. of what's happening. But my thing is, if they're not engaging, that that right there is sus to me because if they're walking away from the mall, and there's that many cops, you know, there's at least five or six cops that aren't listening closely to their radios, and are possibly. You know, am I being detained? Be like, sir, what are you coming from? What yeah. are you doing? You know, you'd expect that type of reaction and not just you'd people just, to not. You'd expect interaction. Yeah. You, and not just like avoidance. Now, unfortunately for me, in my opinion, I can't see clearly enough in the video to be like, what is actually going on? And at first glance, I thought it wasn't people. I thought it was bouncing of light or honestly smoke. So I'm like, is that's a person? Well, you know, because I'm following yeah. the cryptozoologist red arrow circling in some of these videos, and I'm just like, I'm having a hard time making out a person. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's smoke at all. Okay. Because it would be even harder to see. Okay. But the thing is, who knows? I mean, what's more likely? It's just weird camera angles, a little bit of a mystery of why so many cops showed up, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Is, that's actually more likely than, hey, guess what? 10 to 12 foot tall alien, Nephilim, whatever you want to say, is walking around causing this incident at the mall. Yeah. So which one is more likely, right? Realistically, it's probably <laughs> just bad camera angle, whatever, right? And people blowing out of proportion. But, you know, allegedly, all this took place initially in the mall. Mm-hmm. And people were running around all crazy. And if it was 50 kids, like they're saying now, this is according to USA Today, um, 50 kids. And this is 2023 when this occurred. Yeah. I think it was 2023. It, I don't know. It was New Year's Day. Okay, New Year's Day, 2024, right? Yeah. You mean you tell me at least 50 kids that are out there causing a ruckus that nobody has a cell phone camera fired up and is putting crap to the internet? Yeah. Whether it's like being live streamed or, you know, World Star or whatever. I mean, come on. People have phones. There's always a kid with a phone out. Yeah. And nothing's getting out. And police aren't making statements. And see, that's the other And a lot of witnesses or people that were in the mall aren't making statements either. Nobody's saying anything. There's, I tried to look up one of those huge fights and it was, I guess it was in, in December. It was a New Jersey high school had over a hundred students or, you know, not necessarily at that school, but from other schools, they all came into this one high school and started multiple fights. So it did require a lot of the police department, but even in the photos for this, I don't see that many cop cars for this New Jersey fight. Yeah. You there's know? a lot. It's this like all is, the cops in Miami Dade County were all yeah. there. There's a bunch. So this was a very extreme. And which is response. the reason why it is what it is. Like it's, become a thing it's viral now and so if you want to check it out you can certainly search for it yeah um another one that we have that we've kind of put in here and this is relatively recent or i just seen it and it's basically footage from 2017 2018 and it's the jellyfish ufo footage hmm. now this one's kind of weird yeah and if you watch it it looks like it's camera gun footage or gun camera footage from a helicopter or a drone or something 
right, mm -hmm. uh, over in Afghanistan or somewhere. And I, I don't say specifically where it is because I don't really know. And a lot of times these footage and you get little clips that you watch, they're, they're uh, there to get a response from you, but they're, they're always, uh, always a little lacking in the details. And it, this thing looks, you know, almost like a balloon with hanging appendages that's more like a solid balloon, has these weird things hanging underneath it, flying around. It's invisible. Uh, it, uh, here's what makes it interesting. It's invisible to the naked eye. You can only see it on thermal. It looks like a hanging pot, potted plant. No, it doesn't. It looks that's like one of those things from the Matrix, mm. flying around, hanging around. Yeah. It looks like an imperial droid from Star Wars. Mm -mm. I mean, that's what it looks like. But according to the video footage and the information that was provided along with it, this thing flew around for a while. And when I say it looks more like it floated, like purposely floated. Yeah. It did its thing. It went out over the water. Uh, it dipped into the ocean for a, uh, 17 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever it was and then flew away. Oh, wow. It changed colors. Yeah, it's going through the visible spectrum. In other yeah. words, it's keeping itself invisible by refracting light in a way that you can't see it. Oh, it just flew over two people. Yeah, and a dog. I mean, there's footage there where you can see the hot spots. You can make out features, details, buildings, animals, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then this thing is floating around like the Glimmer Man or the, uh, you know, it's invisible, like Predator. Yeah. It's doing a chameleon type thing where you can't see it. But you can't hide the heat, and the heat is what picked it up. So, and whatever it is is following this thing around, and it's like is this information, or where I seen the video, included some of uh, Jeremy Corbell yeah. doing the commentary. And I wish they would have someone else do it. Well, here's the thing. I wish that someone else was doing the commentary, to be honest with you. Folks know my opinion of, of that. Well, they but probably don't. This is so you should tell them. I put it out there. Start out 2024 right because it looks like the way 2024 has started out. It's it's not going. It's not going to go well. I don't trust Corbell. Yeah. I don't, and it's not the the way. It's not the information that he's presenting. It's the way it's being presented. Yeah, and it's that gut check feeling. Like I don't feel. I feel like this person needs to earn my trust before I verify yeah either, i don't or that i i, I don't i don't get the uh, the authentic feel yeah g less than genuine yeah. and that's just a feeling yeah I, I, I and, and keep any... in mind let, let's just do it like this we don't yeah. know him personally we haven't met him yeah or talked to him this is you know and it may it may change in real life I means you might just be like okay this guy is just kind of an, an uncomfortable sort of person maybe this person's just maybe as maybe he awkward is as me <laughs> maybe yeah maybe he is a genuine type person but his presentation how it comes across is socially awkward and that's the way he is yeah. You know, uh, but me, we all have what we like to call bullshit detectors, and sometimes they peg one way or the other depending on the person that's doing the you know, it. Well, speaking of presentation and the way this is, this evidence is being released to us, uh, this video is part of a revelation, um, or this revelation is part of Corbell's investigative documentary, TMZ Presents UFO Revolution. So this is, huh. this is a TMZ documentary. Sweet. Put it up there with Vice. But anyway, you can definitely check it out. It is weird. It is, to me, I was pretty interested. Yeah. But I was also interested enough to go, I'm not going to research this to death. I'm going to stop and talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. Because that way, I, I don't want to, it's kind of a weird thing, right? I Sometimes I put links in these in the podcast show notes, and then you know, we do the podcast, and we has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets to react to not knowing what's going on where I have just slightly a little bit more knowledge than, I mean, <laughs> than she does. And we just talk about it. And somebody who really has a lot of knowledge about it is like these two knuckleheads have no idea what they're talking about. Now what I've, and it's I've, like, I'll show you, we have microphones. My first impression of watching this is, <laughs> Oh, this is another one of Greg's, you know, proof that all of our UFOs are military. military. Yeah. And that's my reaction to this. Well, it's good because I was going to say, what if the reason why this drone footage or whatever is capturing the footage of this thing flying around, mm -hmm. I was going to assume it's a Predator drone because it looks way too smooth to be a helicopter, but it might be, whatever. It's very smooth. Right. Yeah. It's because whatever this is that's floating around being invisible is really being manipulated by our, our own military. Yeah. Like they're testing it. 
like, hey, let's see how dogs react to this thing. They don't. Let's see what a water buffalo reacts. Nope. No reactionary. People can't even see it. They're testing yeah. it in real world. Hmm. Because there's been lots of uh, reports that I've seen, but actually not cared enough about to document or write down and talk about later, of people seeing shimmering, transparent things hmm. in different places. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what if this is part of it? And we do know that, I mean, you can make your own invisibility cloak. You got people out there doing it, and it's like, oh, I'm going to get this rear projection television that uses a Fresnel lens to make a rear projection, right? So you can see it on the big screen, and they bend it a certain way, and they disappear. Yeah. So it's not like this technology doesn't exist. And when it first came around and became popular, in other words, we all seen it on the internet or whatever. I mean, it's been enough time to pass between here and there where I'm sure it's much more advanced. And so making yourself invisible to the human eye is probably pretty easy. Getting rid of your heat signature and being invisible is a little bit more complicated. Because even if you threw a mylar blanket over yourself, you could still see the mylar. You know, if, if we needed to get, if we needed to have see our heat signatures masked so that we could sneak up on something, yeah, we would just grab those mylar space blankets. Okay, and we our heat signature would be greatly reduced, but we'd still look like a weird metal blob running around out in the woods, basically covered in tin foil. Unlike our hats. <laughs> okay. So yeah, those are a couple things that you can search for. Miami aliens, and you can see some footage if you want. And if you want to comment somehow, some way, let us know that you've you've taken a look and whatever your opinion may be, we'll appreciate that. And also the jellyfish UFO footage. Yeah. I was excited about the Miami footage because it's just weird enough to go, what is that? Because that's the kind of stuff I like. I don't like having an opinion when I look at something instantly and go, oh, that's dust in the air. That's, you know, a dirty camera lens. That's a dirty mirror or whatever. Yeah. For seeing ghosts and stuff like that and photos. This thing, I'm like, that's weird video footage. Because the scale doesn't make sense to me. If it was people walking, they would be really small next to a much larger police car. But it's not. It's really tall. And even if you put a camera angle on it and say, okay, I can write this off as being a weird camera angle, then everything would be stretched. There wouldn't just be that one thing that would be stretched. I thought it was... Because anamorphic stretch is a thing. When you And I thought it was light being stretched. I thought it was the blue light of the police lights against moisture or smoke being stretched that's what i initially that was my first yeah because i didn't know what i'm looking at right you know um see i didn't get that at all okay and that's okay but if you think about it if this you know aliens walking around miami is a shimmery thing i do and hard to see and then here you have this viral uh invisible jellyfish craft footage it's also visibly shimmering around and making it hard to see what if they're related yeah don't know. It's hard to say. So speaking of hard to say, we're going to talk about a Smurf rabbit hole. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So uh, we also included this under things to search for. And there was a little TikTok video that came out, and it basically puts this lore of the Smurfs out there. Yeah. And it's pretty disturbing. It is. So we put it in there so you can kind of check it out on your own. And uh, there's also some, like, 20 little-known facts about the Smurfs. So which one do you want to use to talk about? I'm actually going to use uh, this spooky site that I found. I'm, I'll go ahead and include it in the show notes about the true story of the Smurfs, which just like the 20 known facts and this TikTok rabbit hole, um, I can't find enough to back it up. Yeah. And that that's what bothers me because this this reads just enough to be like, I've heard of this. I've had a conversation about this. Why is this, you know? Yeah. But there's no, like, link backs or here's my source for this information or, you know, this was taken from a 14th century account of something. But essentially, this article, which is the Smurfs' true story, uh, claims that, you know, while the Smurfs cartoon first appeared in 1958 from a Belgian comic franchise by artists known as Peyo, uh, it was they were side characters for some sort of fantasy comic he was working on. Um, later on, Hanna Barbera picked up the co- the the cartoon characters and turned them into their own show. But 
This thing says many legends were developed around the figures of these beings, suggesting that the dolls and stuffed animals um, inspired by the characters actually moved. And others even said that these were these beings were responsible for some murders. Um, yes. Observers and people who really try to break down the cartoon claim that the different characters that Peyo created um, harken back to seven deadly sins with things like uh, Selfish, Smurfette, Takion, Grumpy, and Philosopher were the original Smurfs, and that, that goes to those sins. Um, Smurfette being the representation of lust because she's the only female-ish Smurf. But then it takes another step where it claims Gargamel was either a wizard or he was a um, righteous Franciscan monk who battled Smurfs. Yeah, um, because Smurfs were evil. Yeah. And, and that basically Smurfs were um, children who die in winter. Yeah. And then you find them in the spring and they're blue. Yeah. So and, you, and their white hats are supposed to be like snow, representation of snow. Snow caps, much like the mythology of Jack Frost. Yeah. Uh, now, Gargamel's whole mission after he lost many of his friends and family at the monastery because they all died off, he went out into the world and tried to battle these Smurfs. Somewhere along the way, he gets a cat and he names it Azrael, which is the avenging angel. And he performs magical spells and curses to combat the evilness of the Smurfs. Right, because Papa Smurf. Papa Smurf, who wears a red... He uh, wears red. He's the only red. Farshion, I think is the name, <clears throat> way they call that hat. I don't know. Um, the types of hats worn by Smurfs resemble those worn by uh, Egyptian freed slaves in ancient Egypt, which is fun. Mm. Um so if you were a freed slave, you would wear a white hat shaped like that. If you wore a red hat, you were a leader of the freed slaves in Egypt. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a horrible rabbit hole. And, you know, it, blue goblins, blue snow goblins, they steal cha- children like changelings did. You find the bodies in the summertime They're or springtime. They're little springtime. elves kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all these... This conspiracy site harkens a lot of, you know, this is related to the devil, and this is related to evil. Please take this link that I've put with a grain of salt. But Yeah, nobody's, nobody's going to think yeah, that's real. This is but what the, the TikTok video is referencing. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about Gargamel, if I remember correctly in the cartoon, he, he wanted to eat him. Yeah. So you got this throwing a little cannibalism, maybe. <laughs> right? Which the original cartoon artist... A lot of the themes and messaging in the cartoon where the Smurfs were the side characters were inspired by the French Revolution. Yeah. So, you know, those are some, when those people revolt, they go full bore. So, you know. Yeah, they go full on. Yeah. But it's it's something that's kind of crazy. And we would play the TikTok video for you, but, you know, copyright or whatever. Yeah. It seems like there's beginning to be enough stuff to have to worry about with 2024, let alone worry about that. That and, you know, it's... I mean, things are kind of crazy. Crazy weather. Yeah. It's been things flooding and all sorts of tornadoes in weird places like in Florida. Because after this, the thing happened, right? Yeah. Here it is, what, 10 days later, they had a hurricane. Terrible weather. People's stuff's getting flooded, snowed out. It's like, welcome to 2024, man. Oh, that's like that meme that's going around where it's like... Uh, welcome to the first week of 2020, first full week of 2024, and it shows Cat Williams, the Stanley Cups, yeah. the Miami stuff, the storm, and then, um, oh, the guy who attacked a judge, sadly, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, that dude who must have practiced leaping over that thing. Um, <laughs> and the judge, she, she put him away for a long time. He got hammered when he, the same judge, and they brought him back in. Yeah. And she put him away. She she leveled him up with all the charges <laughs> and stuff. It's like ooh, yeah. So yeah, but anyway, here's some uh, relatively good moves, uh, good news, or maybe it's an idea. If you feel like you can prove the paranormal, you might could win some money. Might could. Yep. <laughs> you might could win some money. There's a skeptic yeah. group that's offering five hundred thousand dollars for proof of paranormal abilities. Okay. And my thought was, if if you could prove paranormal abilities. 
What are you just sitting around going, when I get somebody offered, I'm going to show when $500,000, I'm going to reveal my secret to the world. Hmm. Come on. Yeah. If it was a, if it was easy to prove or could be proved, somebody would have done it already. That's the whole thing. So this skeptic group, because they're sitting there going, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's just make it a, let's make it a good number. Let's make it $500,000. Let's not make it too big that if somebody really does prove it and we can't pay it, we get sued, you know? Yeah. It, it make, because otherwise I could say, let's just make it $500 million if you could prove paranormal. No one is never going to be able to pay for it. Yeah. Or that nobody would ever be able to claim the prize money because they wouldn't be able to prove it. See. So this L.A.-based group is offering a large cash sum to anyone who can perform paranormal abilities under their scientific test conditions. And there's been a few paranormal challenges over the years. Most notably has been James Randi, right? Because mm-hmm. his educational uh, foundation did the $1 million challenge for proof of psychic abilities, and that's yeah. the one that everybody knows about. At least that's the one that I know about. Um so, but so the ongoing challenge, yeah, and this is from the Century uh, Century Center for Inquiry Investigations Group, which is a subset of Center for Inquiry. Yeah, established in 1991 by atheist and atheist philosopher and author Paul Kurtz. So it's got multiple umbrella organizations beneath it, including the Committee for Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal. And Committee for Skeptical Inquiry and a couple of others. The Center for in- Center for Inquiry Investigations Group is the subgroup that's offering this reward. Yeah. So. And I misread that. I thought it said injury. So I was about to read Century <laughs> for. I did it again. Yeah. Century for injurious. So yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. So if anybody out there listening to the podcast can prove paranormal ability, you might want to. Uh, you might want to let them know. <laughs> <laughs> that the creep that us the creep geeks podcast i uh, turned you on to it because that way we can get a five thousand dollar prize to anyone who refers a winning applicant to the group mm. so if you can prove paranormal and you win five hundred thousand bucks you know drop our name and we'll take that five thousand bucks and i don't know what we do it take a trip right around my thing is if you truly had maybe like five thousand of- dollars worth of something like some of their campaigns were, you know, because these guys, these are part of these guys are part of the group that went after Yuri Geller, um, and then there's that whole James Randi thing. Yeah. But if you could, if you genuinely had some sort of abilities, and you proved it in a public forum, oh, your life would change forever. You'd never get any peace. You would never see the light of day because some you'd have to hide somewhere. Some unknown government agency is gonna just. Send you to Nevada, never to be seen again. I don't know. You yeah. know? Well, allegedly they did that anyway. Yeah. With, um, like, remote viewing and psychic yeah. stuff. The Russians definitely did it. Yeah. And there's a, a story going around, and I've seen it a couple of different times, that, you know, with the Cold War being the way it was and spies being everywhere, that the United States started releasing and leaking information that we had psychic warriors. Mm-mm who could do all this stuff and that the Soviets were freaked out about it. And they're like, they tried to do it too. Like, Oh man, if they're doing it. And so they really looked into it. Yeah. And allegedly they started having some success in the U S and you know, the secret agencies or whatever in the U S that handle this sort of thing. were like, Oh crap, we got to do it too. Yeah. And somehow or another, it eventually got to the point where, um, there was some levels of success. And finding people who could do some stuff. Now, to what level it is, like, I don't know if you could move a brick with your mind or whatever, but remote viewing seemed to be the most popular and, I guess, successful, in quotes, yeah. uh, psychic endeavor huh. that we know about. And, of course, the whole psychic thing and being able to, uh, I don't, it, see, it becomes such a rabbit hole when you really start digging into it. Like, oh, can you open portals? Can you bring things through? You know, and what's that? What's that? Uh, uh, went right out of my head. You know, the show, the movie, the series, whatever it is, the series Stranger Things was based off of. What's that place where they took kids? Oh, um, went right out of my head. Oh, Montauk. There you go. The, you know, uh, yeah, that Montauk was something that happened where kids were taken and then a portal was open and a monster got loose and all sorts of stuff. And then later on, it loosely became uh, a more popular sort of Netflix show 
to bring it around for you youngsters out there, right? Yeah. That's probably the closest thing you could equate it to. Uh, to give you, is that's loosely based on Montauk, where a government organization has created children exploiting their psychic and, and telekinetic abilities. Oh, there was a... And then a portal got opened up, and you know, they call it the Upside Down. The whole thing, right, is really loosely based on Montauk. Yeah, there should be a documentary y'all can watch. There's a bunch of documentaries. In 2014, 2015, that was actually... It interviewed some alleged people that participated in it, and it also found some interesting files, but yeah, yeah. it's something <clears throat> to look into. Oh, and that documentary... Was it, was it a documentary called The Montauk Chronicles? Yeah. Yeah, it, that... Wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. Yeah, true. But, but yeah, you know, still had some information out there. You can find it on Prime, Apple TV. Uh, Tubi's got it. So, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was something. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's something that I thought was already occurring. Okay. You want to know what it is? What? So synthetically generated, genomically, how do you say that? Genomically targeted plagues will be the future of warfare. It says a new defense report out of uh, wherever it came from. I don't know where it came from. The Rand Corporation. Yeah, there you go. Rand Corporation. Yep. And I thought this was already happening because there's been all sorts of rumors over in the past up until now that there's been diseases and things created to target specific genetic makeups of people. Yes. Like AIDS and at one time sickle cell anemia. Yes. Um, but see, we don't talk about those things because if we were to find any correlation that the U.S. government was involved, our whole country would eat itself. I mean. No, you would, you know what? You would think so. I think we're such an amalgamous. I think we're such. I don't think that would happen at all. I think it's already happened multiple times and we just don't care. Or we don't, I don't think it's... I don't apparent. think we would ever really... It would take something that would affect every single person on the planet since we're such a diverse makeup in the United States. I mean, like how in the 80s there were a lot of novels about what if there was a virus that killed every woman on uh, every woman on the planet? There's a whole genre well, yeah, it's, of that, Well, you know? yeah, of course. And I mean, I'm talking... Because yeah. people don't care. Like, oh, it doesn't affect my biological makeup or my genome. I don't care. Yeah. Because that's just the kind of the way it is. Because if you look at things like uh, we have islands where they test these sort of things. That's like Lyme disease is allegedly a byproduct of trying to make fleas and ticks carry a disease yeah. that could incapacitate troops and people. Mm-hmm. See, because, you know, if you think about warfare... You know, if you if you have a battle going on and you eliminate a soldier, that's just one less you have to worry about, right? Yeah. But the nefarious way of thinking about it is if I wound a soldier, now I take five to ten people out of the fight because they're going to take care of that wounded soldier. Yeah. And so if you can in- incapacitate a people, make them sick before you ever even get there, it just makes the battle easier. And they did this during medieval times too where they do like, I'm sure you've seen on movies where they catapult like a diseased chicken into a well and then they drink the water and they all get sick, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, or... I'm yeah, sure there's like even more than that. Or blankets and fire water, sadly, so... Well, yeah, but that's... Smallpox blankets, so... Y- yeah, <laughs> but that's a little different than creating a plague specifically for a group of people. Mm, yeah. Okay. So and and so I seen this and I'm like, okay, doesn't this? I thought we already did this sort of thing, but now it's probably just becoming popular. We actually talked about you know the the latest and craze virus that took everybody out for two years, saying this was genetically made, this was modified. Yeah. And people are like, no, you're crazy. And then they're like, oh, let's we're going to take down your Instagram and can your Facebook page because of it. And guess what? It is. It is absolutely is. It's been proven. Uh, yeah. Yet, why why is the Rolling Stone allowed to make a full bore, like full on, like documentary expose article about it, but small entities aren't allowed to say because, that? Because you know, fact checking, right? Yeah, and it's just it, is, it has been proven. It has basically been created in a lab. We said that. We said that a long time ago before coronavirus is cool. So it is what it is. So I actually thought this was something that was already being done. But I guess the thing is that what gives this new life is synthetically created, genomically 
targeted plagues is the thing. Hmm. So I guess with coronavirus and viruses in general of the corona family, they were modifying that it's, to do certain things. Yeah. And this is just being created. Yeah. So probably using AI to do it because we actually talked about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now about them using AI, right, to create warfare things. And one of those things was diseases and plagues. And they came up with like 81 different variants of plagues that could be done, but then created 200 more. And they stopped the program. So an AI figured out how to create 200 different things and then the program got shut down. Yeah. And then here it is saying, oh, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> And it's, it even goes back to, and that, I think we talked about that a little while after we talked about like Facebook and the other AI were talking to each other and they realized that trying to use the this syn- syntax that we use to speak in the yeah. programming language wasn't efficient enough, so it created its own. And then they both started talking back to each other in their own language and it started getting faster and faster to the point where they shut it down. But did they actually shut it down? So... It- Everything about this, I'm like, yes, I remember talking about this. Yes, I think it's even more strange that uh, synthetically, as opposed to organically replicating and modifying, we can now possibly like synthesize a virus without having to use organic or some sort of previous foundation. We can make something all new to take us out. Yes. On top of that, we have, you know, this... Miami thing going on. We have these strange weather events and everything. And I was talking about this to somebody and they said something and it stopped me dead. And they said, okay, doomer instead of okay, boomer. Did you immediately punch that person in the face? I, I said some, some words. See, and here's, here's the problem. Now, now, but that makes me go, is that what generation I am where I am more easy to accept some of these very scary things am i just sitting here waiting for the apocalypse am i just sitting here waiting for something awful like no. monumentally and awful? let me tell you why because that group of people mm-hmm. or the same group of people that i just said don't care about as long as it doesn't happen specifically yeah. are the ones that when people do point out stuff that's occurring you're like okay doomer yeah because they don't care because it's not affecting them whereas when you're uh, i don't want to say woke when yeah. you know you're seeing this sort of thing going you know these things are adding up does that make you a doomer or does it just make you aware that things are going on and they're all weird, whether they can be proved or not. It's just some weird stuff happening. But you got people that turn a blind eye. Like, well, it doesn't affect me, so I don't care. So since you're so attuned to it, you're, you're part of the problem because you're a doomer. And it's like, oh, I don't think so. Hmm. What do you call the, those people are um, NPCs. <laughs> they're non-player characters. They're like, whatever, man, they're going to ride it out. Those are the people that get are just shocked. Right, just completely shocked when a hurricane shows up out of nowhere and actually wipes out their stuff. They knew it was coming, but this doesn't affect them, so they don't care. And, oh, why are you worried about it? No, I don't think they're like that. Well, I can't think of an example that sort of drives it home more than, you know, people ignoring the news. There's always somebody who's freaked out that, wow, a hurricane showed up when you've been hearing about it for weeks and weeks and weeks, right? But there's... There are smaller things that only certain people find out about or know about, right? But, and then the majority are freaked out and like, wow, wow, where did this come from? Well, the problem is there's always a hurricane. There's always a weird virus. There's always some strange police presence. There's always some weird object flying in the sky. Yeah, it's there is. There and always, it's how you deal with it. And you got people like, I, you know what? I don't care. If it takes me out, it takes me there's out. There's always a weird celebrity death, which just happened today. And I'm like, what in the world? So Yeah. I mean, granted, I'm sure we're hearing about a lot more weird stuff because of the way things are these days. You can get news at an instant. But at the same time, when when your normal level of weird bullshit mm-hmm. starts getting pegged one way or the other, like this is even more weird than usual, you know, that's usually an indication that something's going to ha- something's happening, something's going to occur. Yeah. And how much of all this is really just diversionary tactic put across by something else? Like the okie doke. And people really, and this is what gets me, a lot of people, they have com- they have complete trust in the government. And I don't, because the government is made up of people who are easily corruptible, it seems. Or. But I'm, I've always been that way. I'm always waiting for the okie doke. Hey, you want a piece of gum? And then you get it, and you're like, yeah, I got a piece of gum. And you look at it, it's got hair all over it. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> I would like to think that the government is not just made up of possibly 
not as ethical people, but I think a lot of people show up just as fallible, just as fallible as the next person. Well, of course, but I think they show up with good intentions and then they basically, it's like, Oh, well, my good intentions can, I can, I can sort of slack off on that. If you give me $30 million for something, it's amazing how rich, if you want to get money and power, you you get into politics because you can show up broke and leave a millionaire for sure. I saw a meme about that today that basically if smog, the dragon in like the Hobbit, According to day, today's standards, is less rich. Smog the dragon, who owned a whole mountain of gold, like a literal mountain that he slept on, he is less rich than fourteen of America's richest people. Yeah, well, there's a, allegedly the idea that there are trillionaires out there, and you don't hear about them. Yeah, so a lot it, of them are like Saudi princes and stuff because they have oil and stuff like that. They don't have to declare their income. But the fact that we now have fourteen Americans because. I remember reading something in the 90s because I was a journalism student, whatever. But America didn't have a lot of those billion billionaires, you know, deca billionaires or whatever. And now suddenly we do because there's been a shift in the way the world is working. So we we now have much more wealth in America, but it's all, again, being held by certain people. Yeah, I think you'd probably be shocked at how many of those billionaires are cash poor so yeah because you know money is not worth the paper it's printed on if you can keep printing it so it's assets and yeah i guess fungibles oh if but that's a, i don't even know if that's the right use of it gold, yeah gold's being devalued so even smog the dragon you know? well yeah and it's funny because i seen <laughs> i seen a video where this person takes gold yeah and has created like gold notes and it's currency because mm-hmm. it's you know, like five dollars worth of gold yeah. is actually in the note. Yeah. So when you hand somebody this, it looked like this spiffy gold-looking piece of plastic paper. Yeah, this is worth five bucks. It actually has five bucks worth of gold, as in weight, yeah, impurity in that piece of paper. So at the end of the day, it's gold. It's not just a piece of paper with linen and little colorful fibers in it and an anti-theft yeah. counterfeit thing. It's real. You know, it's a thing that people tell you to buy. Gold and silver. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. So, yeah. Um, in a recent report funded by the RAND Corporation, which is also funded by the Office of the Secretary of Defense and National Defense uh, Research Institute, researchers explored the potential for engineered pathogens to become instruments of warfare. Okay. I guess engineered pathogens is really what sets this apart. From the, I thought we were already doing this. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, because this has occurred, you know, back when, as far as you can remember, there's been some sort of biological warfare against your perceived enemies. Mm. Like sending in infected people to places to get other people infected so they eventually get sick. All that sort of thing has been occurring. But yeah, technological improvements, including messenger... Uh, Basically using CRISPR to genetically engineer things. It's It goes on, and it talks about the history of biological weapons and stuff like that. I just wanted to put it in here because I'm, I thought we were already doing this. Mm. That's all. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah. It's just a rabbit hole of stuff to go in. Speaking of rabbit hole, this really got my attention. Hmm. And you want to know what it is? What? It's a meat mystery. Meat mystery? Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I put this in the podcast, in case you're still listening to the podcast, is that I was thinking, what are we going to have for dinner? (laughs) We're going to have some meat. Okay. So, a British town has been gripped by a strange mystery centered around puzzling piles of meat that have been found throughout the community over the last few months. (laughs) It's like, hey, uh. Is that your meat pile over there? The weird case is reportedly unfolding in the Manchester suburb of Stockport where residents have understandably expressed consternation over the mounds of beef and chicken that someone has seemingly been dumping at various spots in the small town. People are really worried about it, a uh, councilman said, uh, of the near-weekly meat deposits, noting that many are fearful of the possibility that there's any poison in it, and if it's intended for dogs who might get sick if they eat it, that would make me really mad. Well, yeah. yeah. It's just a random pile of meat. Yeah. Like, why is it there? Yeah. And 
what if a poor dog went over and or even dog cat a squirrel squirrel hedgehog unattended to toddler who knows yeah. i mean yeah somebody so, who basically hunts and says you know if i get to the center of that meat pile it's probably been <laughs> <laughs> it's probably safe yeah if I get through all the crud, I can get to the good part, right? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Like, you got people eat roadkill. I mean, they know if meat's fresh or not. I'm not certainly an expert in it. But. Calling the dumping of the raw food bizarre behavior, uh, the councilman went on to lament that residents are baffled and annoyed by the strange phenomena. As far as who could be dumping the meat and why, she theorized that it's businesses cutting costs on legitimate disposal practices with the misguided belief that the peculiar practice is permissible since the materials are technically biodegradable. No. They know better. I, and mm. I don't think it's a matter of do they know better. I think it's a matter of do they think if they got if they got caught. Yeah. If they could play it off. It's organic. It's biodegradable. There's no law that says I can't dump a thousand pounds of meat in the woods. I'm feeding nature. But they're they're not dumping it in the woods. They're dumping it in town. And that's Well, well maybe it's like the German German fo- uh, farmers who are revolting because they their farms are being threatened to be taken away, yeah. right? Because of global warming and stuff, where they're out there dumping poo poo and shooting manure all over city buildings and things like that. Is you, are you aware of that? I saw the video that someone shared. I thought yeah. they were French. I thought yeah, it was I'm French pretty farmers. sure they're German. Uh, French. Yeah, those four guys, weeks ago. Uh, regional council in France, farmers protest. Well, look up German farmers protest. And that probably lend more credence yeah. to what I was saying because I didn't say French. So. And? Okay, tractors take over Berlin. Yes. Yeah, so the one I was referring to was somebody that we know. He was sharing videos of France whether they were going downtown, going to the council office and dumping like a full bulldozer full of poo-poos. Yeah. yeah. Well, these are German farmers that are doing yeah. much the same. For a little bit of a different reason, though. Uh, the understanding is that they want to close down farms. Yeah. Because of uh, climate change. Yeah. But And that's contentious as it into itself. You know? Which, all of this, you know, meat mystery, farmers protesting, all adds up to increased cost to the everyday man when it comes to food. Yeah. And something we didn't put in the podcast because I thought I sent it to you and I didn't was that Pepsi got pulled from the shelves from a lot of stores overseas. So. Okay. Well, why? Yeah. All Pepsi products um, from the European supermarket giant chain Carefor, they're removing all PepsiCo products from store shelves due to what they say are unacceptable price hikes. And <laughs> yeah. Good. Now. Pepsi is one of those ones where since 2020-ish, their costs have been increasing in double-digit percentages. Yeah, there's a lot of companies doing that. Yeah. However, Pepsi overall, whether it's like their, you know, potato chips, like, you know, their potato chips, their beverages, their snacks, whatever, um, they are getting pulled from Care4 grocery marts and Care4 subsidiaries. So... Which is major because that's like, I I don't know about this, but according to the articles I've read, they're a they're a big big grocery store, you know. Yeah, well, hopefully th- yeah. this will happen. So, because honestly, even if you look outside of inflation, the, the price hikes yeah. and stuff, it's gotten to the point where, um, wow, PepsiCo, it's Lipton greed. tea, Quaker Foods, Doritos, and Lay's. Yeah. From stores in France, Italy, uh, Spain, and Belgium. Yeah. Wait till America finds out about it. Yeah. And that, oh, that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. So I saw the article, right? And I went to click on the original article because it talked about a decision being made here in the United States from a grocery store. The article immediately got pulled and I got a 404 before I could get the whole article to resolve. Interesting. So then I waited an hour, and I was like, oh, I can't wait to send this to him. Waited an hour, went back to the news site, and they edited their social media post and directed to this one just talking about European um, companies. Huh. So I was just like... You know, 
And then I tried to look because I tried to remember the title for what it was, pop it into Google News, and all the tweets have been removed as well. Yeah. Because, you know, you can do that. You can you can pay. And you, you can have things taken away or not. They don't, and that's the thing too. They don't have to allow that sort of thing, yeah. like Google and stuff like that. No. It's like it, sometimes it pays to go to European websites to find news. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are like, oh, you do that because you're a conspiracy person. It's like, no, because no. when I know something doesn't smell right. And this this story technically broke via social media and, believe it or not, linked in. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I think leaked, LinkedIn is probably the least policed. It gets snoozed on. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's typically considered corporate safe. You could yeah. be working in an office building and you're like, oh, you got Facebook up? No, you can't do that. Oh, you got LinkedIn? Oh, yeah, hey. Do you see the article on how to, you know, it do started, training? Yeah, and it started because a rival supermarket chain um, issued public grievances over the price hikes from suppliers like PepsiCo. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's just primarily because most corporations and companies have their internet filters set to allow LinkedIn. Yeah. With less restrictions. Yeah. So. And something like whatever. So speaking of time travel, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the podcast with a real quick time travel quiz, courtesy of the website Higgy Pop, <sighs> which is a UK-based website. And I put this in here thinking it would be kind of cool because this is a new year and we uh, have a tendency to kind of reflect, reflect back of what happens in the past. And I didn't want to do that with our last podcast. Because everybody does it. They usually do it before. <laughs> you know, reflect on the email. Like, huh? Yeah. But this is a time travel quiz. I'm going to read a couple questions and you're going to answer them. Okay? Mm-hmm. So don't answer until I actually read you the question. I'll give you the your choices. You know how this works? You ready? Yeah. Okay. So here's the first question. Who wrote the 19... Uh, I already messed it up. 1895 science fiction classic, The Time Machine. Aww. Now, there's only two that really make sense. H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, or Orson Wells. Okay. The last one is too modern. Yeah. He's, yeah. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Um, H.G. Wells. Yep. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, what was Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logang's time machine disguised as? Was it a post box, a photo booth? Or a telephone booth. Phone booth. Yes. Of course I know that one. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah. But even if they would have put police box. <laughs> so. <laughs> in Back to the Future, what happened to Biff and his friends during the skateboard chase? They fell into a pond. They crashed into a manure truck. They crashed into the courthouse. Okay, so this is the first one. I gave you a hint because we talked about it. Manure truck. That's right. Yep. Manure truck. That is correct. So this one is for the listeners. In Primer, the most confusing time travel movie movie ever made, the protagonist time travel in a box filled with which gas? Xenon, radon, or argon? We're going to wait and let him answer. (laughs) Okay. All right. Is that your answer? Argon. I Good got, job. I got that one right. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. If All right, here we go. Hold one. on. <laughs> no, I, I really like this movie because at the time it was groundbreaking. In 1984 movie, right? The movie came out in 1984. Terminator was sent back to assassinate who? Kyle Reese, Sarah Connor, or John Connor? Sarah. Let me click. Wrong. Sarah Connor. I said Sarah. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, here we go. What did Dr. Emmett Brown steal to power his time machine? Uranium, plutonium, or lithium? Plutonium. Correct. Okay, here's one that's all British. Uh, I don't know it. So, in the BBC series Life on Mars, Sam Taylor awakes... In the 1970s, in which British city after an accident? Liverpool, Manchester, or London? Uh, I'm going to take a guess and go for the one that doesn't start with an L, Manchester. Correct. Yes. Cheater. Okay, in Quantum Leap, what is the name of Dr. Sam Beckett's holographic companion 
as he traveled through time? Gushi, Al Calavici, or Ziggy? Okay, I, I remember it's Al. I don't I don't remember the Correct. last name. Okay. Yeah, he was actually supposed to be an admiral. Oh. So, because Ziggy is the name of the handheld thing. I don't know. Gushi is, I don't know who it is, but anyway. I think Gushi is the computer. Mm. I don't know. All right, we got two more. Which of the following movies involves time travel without using a man-made device? Groundhog Day, Source Code, or Looper? Groundhog Day. Yes, that's Bill Murray. Yeah. Correct. Number 10. What speed does Dr. Emmett Brown's DeLorean need to reach in order oh, to achieve story. time travel? 77 miles per hour, 66 miles per hour, 88 it's miles per 88. hour. 88. Yes. Yep. we got to do one more because that was real easy. Besides this one, some. Okay, so which magical device does Hermione Granger use to travel in time in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? I'm over 50. I have no idea. Definitely. Is it the Probibity Probe, a Time Turner, or the Weasley Family Clock? If I don't get this right, my bestie is going to be so mad at me. Um, we don't talk like that here. <laughs> time Turner. Yes. Correct, and we're going to end it with this last one. Yeah. In Doctor Who, the Doctor's time machine, known as a TARDIS, looks like a police box due to what faulty fault? Oh. Uh, Is it the cloaking matrix, the chameleon circuit, or the perception field? Oh, that. Now, I turned you on the Doctor Who because you know, I used to watch it as an after school show because it was kind of came on for kids in the 70s. I don't know this one. I'm going to say chameleon circuit. Uh, okay. Okay, I was going to say perception field. Perception field is what's used when they show the little blank card and go, hmm. Oh. You know, I'm a, a foot inspector or whatever. And, and yeah. I think it's perception field. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Comedian circuit. So there you go. Wasn't that fun and exciting? If no. you have any questions, comments, <laughs> concerns about that sort of thing, let me that know. That actually stressed me out. You know, we could do, I think there's just like one last question. No. No. Yeah, there's, there's two, two questions left. Three. Yep, there's three left. Okay, we'll do the last one. Okay. Which of these Star Trek movies does not feature time travel? Oh, f I'm not going to get this Star right either. <laughs> Star Trek from 2009, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, Star Trek Nemesis, which came out in 2002, and Star Trek First Contact. Uh. Um. <sighs> Okay, they definitely go back in time, Voyage Home. They definitely go back, First Contact. Nemesis. Final answer? Yeah. She called a friend. <laughs> Greg? No, that's not right. It's got to be Star Trek 2009. But I was wrong. It is Nemesis. Yay. Look at you. Just using process of elimination to cheat on a test. No, because I, I knew. I know. To be honest, we don't even know which... When Nemesis is about. See, that, that's what confused me because I'm like. Because it's from 2002. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. So I don't know. Are you looking it up? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Is that the one where. Yeah, because Tom Hardy is in it. He plays the guy who went back in time to. Because. Oh, man. All right. I think it was a Picard clone. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, do appreciate you taking time to listen to the podcast. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. This has been our podcast for uh, this particular week, and it's been Season 7, Episode 298, Miami Aliens, Jellyfish UFO, Smurf Lore, Meat Mystery, and Proven Paranormal, uh, Proof Paranormal Win Money. And we threw in the time travel thing as a, as a bonus. Yes. So we do appreciate you taking time to listen. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit us up. Yep. And be sure to follow us on social media. Hit us up on our Facebook group, Creek Geeks Facebook group. We are growing, and we appreciate it when you guys post in there or share ideas or even just share memes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.